Hello, my name is Riley, and this is the van I built over the last three years, and I'm gonna give you guys a tour. This isn't any van, this is a cube van. So the front may look like your normal cargo van, but if you zoom out a bit, it's got this big ass box, which is sick. This is a 1999 GMC uh, Savannah. She's an old beast, but she can take a beating. Rusty mirrors, door handle may not work, but those are all just minor things. What I've done here is I've cut a big RV door on the side of the thing to make it easy. I know I wanted to make it a stealth camp originally, but ease of access just makes that so much nicer. I've actually had the vehicle now for about three years and I've recently sold it. So there's a lady that's moving in here and we've uh, been the last couple weeks here doing a process of I've been hustling trying to get this thing finished so she can live in it and she's been moving in here because she has only a couple more days to move out of her house and into here full time. So yeah, welcome aboard. Most of this vehicle is made out of reclaimed parts that I found like actually on the side of the road I would be driving and be like, oh, that's a beautiful piece. And I had an eye out for oak and I'm like finding more oak cabinets and pieces and all of a sudden there was like a free oak desk on the side of the road and had this beautiful veneer top on it. I had to put it in. Uh, so I made that my kitchen counter. This is just a bar sink. Nice and small. Keeps it really clean and gives you a lot of counter space to do more activities. So the stove I actually ripped out of a uh, decrepit old trailer that was rotting in the middle of the woods there. I paid the guy like 500 bucks and took everything out of it. And it was actually in really good condition. Like worked for me for the couple of years when I lived in it. And yeah, it still looks pretty pristine. I've uh, made a lot of nachos in here. That's about it. I just like nachos, so I really do the oven for anything else. Also took the hood out as well. What I've done is I've actually ducted it um, in the wall crevice. I've taken out the insulation. I put a new duct in that goes straight down to the bottom of the floor of the cube and it vents actually right on the ground. That way I had no more roof penetrations and it just dissipates all the smoke and greasy stuff. So it's a little noisy, but she's got lots of juice. Oh yeah, I got a microwave oven. Da, 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 da. Oh, they're my trim pieces too. Yeah, these are meant to go. I, I like cut the cabinet out trying to get this thing to fit in here. I got an inverter and I was pretty excited to get all this stuff in. So basically that's how that's gonna glue in there. But so I got a, I got a 2001 inverter. It runs my microwave. It's a small microwave, but it does the job. This thing is actually uh, off my buddy's boat, so it's been it's been across a few seas. The cabinets themselves, I made them myself out of, uh, actually I ripped apart old cabinets and made them all reclaimed. So pretty basic. I put uh, nice lips on here so nothing can fall out, really solid. And the hinges keep everything really tight and closed. I haven't had to actually deal with latches or anything. Um, on the other hand though, when I was driving, the drawers would just fall out and everything would completely go on the ground. But I've uh, done a neat, doings here where I've used these neodymium magnets and I keep them on kind of loose and then I have uh, these like cool allen keyed big headed uh, steel bolts here and you can kind of adjust them in and out so they're just touching here um, touching the magnet so then when you slide your drawer in it really locks in and it's super solid they're really, really crisp love it um, Tons of storage in here, by the way. Um, everything opens up. And then just like the drawers with the magnets, I've done the same thing with the fridge here. It slides out beautifully. This is where I keep my beer under cabinet lighting. Boom, 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 boom. GFCI plug from the inverter as well. You can plug an air fry in there, coffee maker. You're set. Oh, the tile wall, yeah. So it was pretty questionable putting tile up there, but they were beautiful and large and nice and shiny. So I thought I'd give it a try. I actually put like a piece of plywood behind there, which was able to move separately than the whole vehicle. And then all the tile was glued to that piece of plywood. So it should be pretty independent to the whole vehicle. So I hope cracking in the grout's not gonna be too much of an issue. I know they're not gonna fall off the wall because I used a lot of Gorilla Glue. So this is one of my biggest inspirations from kind of ship riding and stuff. And they have like really cool curves and all the joinery on boats really fascinate me. So I, this is my first attempt at doing that. These uh, were made from the legs from the oak desk that I had. So I actually cut up the legs and joined them all together and then um, spliced them all in a way that they 
made one full piece and did an oak veneer over top of everything for that nice swoop. Likewise, on the uh, starboard side here, I did the same thing, but I did like a nice cool cutout here so you can put your phones and drinks and who knows what else. I find that really handy. Um, it's a great place for phones because I also put the, um, I got my USB charger inverter, five volts. Um, it also gives me the voltage of the battery and everything so you can keep an eye on that. Um, under the bed here, I put these drawers in. So I have tons of storage under the bed. This is actually where the skylight's gonna go. Future dreams, obviously, but right now there's a beautiful picture of an ocean on the ceiling. So when you're laying down, you can look at the sea. Um, but my original idea was to put a big skylight in right here and it was gonna be pop top and everything and really get that airflow and light showing in here because the cube is a little bit dark, even though we have lots of mirrors and the backs opened up and yeah, so that's that. So for the new owner, We've uh, kind of mixed things up here a little bit. This used to be a big L-shaped couch and it turned into like kind of a double bed little thing. Made, made the space a little bit easier for camping and having more people visit. But we ripped all that out and we put a big desk in here so she can do her artwork and her sewing and it gives her way more storage for her stuff because she's gonna be living in here full time. The really cool thing about the desk was this is her prize desk that she loved and wanted to keep it and it actually happened to fit perfect. Didn't really have to modify it too much little cut there snuck a hinge in there so everything just pops right up and we have a ton of room you can access all the goodies whatever you want to get at and then also underneath of here as well there's more of these things pop up um i, don't know, I should as well do this cool little hook here this just hooks in like that it's perfect this is a pretty cool live edge shelf that we made just made it from scraps of um the Alaskan saw and kept everything kind of unique and whoop de whooped. Here are the switches and a controller. So this is for the diesel heater. I have the inverter for the, I mean, this is the remote controller for the inverter. And then I have the lights uh, for everything here. I also have the back there as well on a separate circuit mixed with a three-way. There's a little hidden switch in here. So I can turn it back from here and then go back and forth and or we can walk the plank before i had like a really cool fold down desk similar to this big one but it was a bit smaller that was kind of made for my computer desk and whatnot but now we ripped all that out and put a giant shelf in here for more storage and living supplies actually i think this is all of uh the uh, all of aaron's art supplies here that she's moving into but she put this cool uh, bookshelf in here it fits in really nicely she put the mirror and the hinges on here she did a great job Um, so over here, this is the head. This is the big shower that I made. Right now, this is just a shower. It can also be converted to a um, shower, shitter, whatever you like, but I don't really like to mess with that kind of stuff. So we left that out. Underneath is the holding tank. So if you wanted to put it into make it a black water tank, you could. But for now, it's just a sweet shower. I uh, put this nice, whatever, white, fiberglass board it's all waterproof glues to the wall very solid up top i cut a fan in here this one has three speeds and the light so i got the rough cedar as well and everything blends together and that fan has a lot of suction it's great we do have hot water and cold water as well should have flexed that one earlier when i showed you guys the kitchen but same thing here for the shower it's pretty sweet look at that look at that also got uh, multi-selections here. So if you don't like the shower head, just wash your feet or your dick. <laughs> um, and then it's got the cool little spray shower head too. Yeah, so the base, I custom made the base as well. Um, I, I took all the plywood. I, I used uh, 5 8 just OSB, but then I angled it all so it has a, um, two inch riser on each side and then funnels down to the middle where uh, everything should drain into the drain because that's what it's for. I fiberglass the whole thing. I went up and lapped the edges so that the fiberglass goes up about uh, three to four inches around the top so you can fill this thing right up and it's not going to leak out anywhere. Um, it looks a little rough right now because the paint is sitting right here. I haven't painted it yet. 
on the to-do list. Well, this was a fun piece to actually make because I like had to figure out the angles, made a nice tightish seam, and then the door had to be very careful with because I had to cut it dead straight and then jigsaw the nicest roundest curve that I could do um, to keep a tight fit. And then I fiberglassed or resined all the edges so that it was sealed. The handles here, we made them as symmetrical as possible. So it's kind of got a nice, uh, I don't know what you would even call that, mirror look to it, I guess. Symmetrical. And then just has a nice, really solid, tight fit. If you want to come check out the uh, cockpit here. Right now, it's kind of the storage locker for everything. Um, that was my, I've been looking for these guys. Um, don't worry about that one, but I got a backup camera. It's pretty sweet. Um, I just normally drive by Braille and kind of hit things and I can hear people yelling at me. So now that won't happen. I just been using these 12 volt puck lights. They're pretty sweet. I actually get them at Home Depot or wherever of Amazon and they're, they come with like a transformer cause they're meant for like houses and stuff like that. But you just cut that off cause they're for 12 volts and they're super simple. You just use double sided tape and stick them up. The wires are small. So. They're uh, quite flexible on what you can do with them. This thing is fully wrapped in R20 insulation. It's about two inches of foam. I got some on the floor, high density, the walls as well, and on the ceiling. So this thing stays super warm all year round. It doesn't take much to heat it at all. Um, the fact that there's no windows really or anywhere for condensation to form, this thing stays dry as a bone as well. Follow me, this is the, uh, this is the garage. I know everyone says that. Erin built these beautiful shelves here. She's got her multi-tiered storage unit. That's actually pretty awesome. I'm pretty stoked on that. Um, underneath here, I got a ton of space. This was my toolbox area. I had all my tools, my kiteboard gear, I had surfboards and nine foot surfboards. They would slip right in underneath the whole kitchen area. Um, so this thing can hold a lot. I actually ran my electrical business out of here for a whole year, at least a whole summer. It was pretty good. Carried all my stuff. There's another reel of my wire. Had like five of those in there. Pretty basic, I got a 120 um, split DC, high voltage, low voltage panel here. I got the mains, all the nice uh, breakers. This side I got the fuses, nothing's labeled, but not really an issue. Charger, um, battery isolator. So when the engine's on, it enters charging the batteries. I have uh, two 4D giant ass batteries. One of them is up top. There's my inverter. And the other one is uh, under here. I built all these. This is like, and I know it's actually two deep cycles down there, but let's see. So this is where like all the fuels go and all the stinky stuff underneath the bed. And it's all vented to outside underneath the vehicle here. I got a bathtub sized water tank. This thing is huge huge um i think it's close to 40 gallons that's pretty big eh yeah i'm gonna say it's 40 gallons i've never done the math but how big's a bathtub you think no i don't know i know this thing fills a bathtub i rigged everything up as well so i can have uh shore power as well as shore water clips into there this is another one i hauled out these are where the propane tanks are this side this is where i got the uh, water pump nice and low so it never has to have priming issues. I have the hot water tank here. It is propane and electric. Two propane tanks, only one plugged in at a time. And then I have the electrical cord as well. But here's a cool trick. I've done this, I cut this in here so that this pops out like so. Put it when we don't want it. And then this thing can just slide closed. Oh, I even put little storage lights. Check this out. Another switch here, boom. I was always having an issue trying to figure out, cause this had like a roll up door before, like most Q vans have, but the roll up doors don't seal very well. They have huge gaps around everything and they kind of take up a lot of room too. So what I've done is, uh, I don't know if you can recognize what this is here, but these are styrofoam filled bifold, bifold garage doors that I chopped up and then I built a frame for them to sit in and made them pretty cool vertical swing doors. This is the uh, gray water tank. Pretty simple. Use strut and everything to mount it up and whoop, 
Almost got you there. <laughs> it's full. Been testing out that uh, shower too much. Follow me. Had to do something a little different to mount the solar panels uh, because the box is so wide. I ended up using strut and making these cool little L-shaped brackets here out of angle iron and then bolted these like stainless clamps that I found off Amazon. They worked really well. I got this big thick ledge here, so this thing isn't going anywhere. Um, and then these are all just bolted right to the uh, piece of strap. This has been an uh, like idea that I've had for a while, but the van kind of just came up for sale and it was a decent price and need a little bit of work. And I'm like, oh, that's pretty sweet. I can make that happen. And then, but he's like, yeah, put an offer in. I kind of gave like, I don't know what I thought was a reasonably low offer, like still fair, but lower end, you know? And he's just like, yeah, great. And I'm like, oh, sweet. So then I ended up with this cube van. Um, originally I thought I would just live in it and work on job sites and sort of do that mix of things, sort of make it a work truck slash living truck thing. That only lasted for like a year. Then things changed pretty suddenly. Ended up just finding a place to rent full time. And that was pretty sweet. Um, so my life completely changed into 180. What was it like to live in here? It was pretty awesome actually. I had this thing parked uh, right beside the harbor on the water. I was like parked on the pier and it was a stealth vehicle and it like blended in with the other commercial vehicles. So like I had a waterfront property and no one bothered me at all. It was so sick. Um, and there was like, it was kind of like an industrial dock. So there's lots of noise and stuff like that, but it's very well insulated in here. And I slept like a baby. The barges would pull in, you hear them smash the dock, whatever. But it was just like pretty quiet in here. And for a giant ass truck like this, it was pretty well hidden in plain sight. You know what I mean? I'm selling this because I want to fund more projects of mine. Um, I've definitely spent a lot of time and effort in this thing and I don't see myself really living in anytime soon unless I found like a sweet property to park it on and live in there. But I don't really have that coming in the next short term view. So for now, I'm just going to sell this thing, take that, maybe buy a jet ski, go kiteboarding and yeah, just enjoy life. You know, it's too short. Got to keep moving on. Um, I also, yeah, want to get my Samurai back on the road too. That's a, uh, it's like a little red truck I've had since I was 17 and she's been eating some love. So basically turning this big truck into a smaller truck again. I don't know. I kind of wanted to like prove to myself that I can have really like, that I can have an idea and just fully execute it. So it was like a lot of discipline and trying to push myself to something that I know I can do, but I just like, wanted to happen and proved myself that I can actually create something and have a sense of like accomplishment. I don't know. Yeah. You know, get her done. After three years of owning and living in this thing and putting a ton of money into it, originally it started off with like pretty low budget. Like I was able to reclaim a lot of the materials and it wasn't super expensive off the bat, but then things do add up quite quickly, especially when prices of everything go up and insulation costs more money. And then you kept adding electrical and solar panels and inverters and just everything starts adding up pretty quickly. So before you know it, um, stuff boosts up. But if you compare it to like not paying rent for a year, then I'm pretty break even with everything. It's kind of nice. Uh, basically I'm selling the vehicle for cost plus my time at a dollar per hour <laughs> picking the cube van for like a shell to build out of was probably one of the best things to do because it is absolutely solid it's got uh, like metal sheeting on the outside solid um joists and studs they're all steel so everything's really really solid and with that i was able to build everything pretty solid instead of here um I drove this thing down lots of logging roads really fast and I've definitely drifted it, drifted it uh, more than once. And really other than like everything falling out of the cabinets and the drawers slamming out and like the cast iron and the stove, the door opened up and dented the floor right there. But um, other than that, everything stayed in place. So like the cabinets, everything, like nothing moved, which was sweet. So this thing definitely passed the Riley test. Yeah, so I have a YouTube channel called Riley's Island. I tried also filming. That's actually one of the reasons why I started making this too is I wanted to make it into a YouTube series and build it up. But 
uh, for me, I couldn't focus on two projects at one time, so I ended up making half the videos, and then they kind of just stopped. But you can find them on YouTube, Riley's Island, and as well as uh, on Instagram, same, Riley's Island. Um, and then I'll have just random tidbits of random adventures and projects that I'm doing here and there. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, please share it with a friend. Also, if you want to watch more Alternative Dwellings, we've got a playlist popping up right here, and we release new episodes every single Sunday, so consider subscribing.